and it just gets funnier. Um, let's bring out the reason why we're all here tonight. Grace Helbig, Mamrie Hart, and Hannah Hart. Big round of applause. What's up, Apple Store? <laughs> um, uh, let's get right into it. Yeah. I would just love to know very quickly the backstory of this movie. How did, how did it come to be? Uh, well, I was turning 30 when I started writing it, and I was having a blast embracing my age and, you know, ready to have a party on my 30th, but a lot of people I knew didn't feel the same way. They weren't really celebrating it or going out of their way. They were silently dealing with uh, <laughs> all their insecurities about turning 30, so that was kind of the jumping off place, and then Grace and I had recently watched, we streamed a movie on, we used to do this thing called Home Buddies, and we watched Can't Hardly Wait, and we just, we were like, Party movies are so much fun, yeah. and there's so many of them that deal with parties in high school, but we're 30, almost. Like, yeah. we still have house parties and fun, so we wanted to create that feeling, but at, uh, you know, a decade later. Yep. And you accomplish it, I feel like, definitely. Absolutely. Um, so, Grace and Mamrie, both of you come from very strong improv backgrounds, and Hannah, I've been on set with you before, and you're very quick on your feet. Um, yeah, I know. Um, how closely did you guys stick to the script throughout filming? Uh, we stuck to the script exactly uh, for the most part because Mamrie wrote the script and Mamrie would stand by the monitor and make sure none of her jokes got changed. They're going <laughs> off script. <laughs> I was there every second, every shot, didn't matter if I was in it. Yeah. But it's also, it's a great script and there's very limited time when you're shooting a film and there's a lot of other people involved, not just the three of us. And so any time wasted uh, was affected Everyone was affected by that, so we tried to be as professional as possible. There were a few moments where things got improvised, like the whole there's a whole dance fight sequence that happens, uh, and that was just in between two different shots that were getting set up, and everyone was there, all the extras, and we just rolled on this dance sequence, and it's like one of my favorite moments in the movie. Yeah, no time was wasted, and that answers the second question. It was not real alcohol on set. We were completely <laughs> sober the entire time. Honestly. So no real white Russians. No, I was drinking warm soy milk with fake ice. No. For yeah. Seventeen days. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so that's method. For Her me. bones are so strong, strong. now. So strong. Um, Mamrie, this is the second feature you've written, and what? How has the writing process changed since Tim, uh, Camp Dakota? Oh, oh, wow. I don't know. I wrote a book in between. So I think from that, I was just really excited to write in script form and dialogue again. It's different this time around because in Camp Dakota, it was mainly just the three of us in every scene of the movie. So juggling all the different storylines of this one and making sure that each one of them had their moment to shine, I think that was the big part. There was definitely a draft probably um, like nine months before we actually shot it where there were four characters that, and four whole storylines that didn't make it in because there's a limited amount of time and if, if someone doesn't get their due, what's the point? Kill your darlings, as they say. Wow. Um, That's a phrase. <laughs> <laughs> Relax. <laughs> Am I but also, boy? this time around, I feel like you got to do what you do best, which is write jokes. Like, yeah. Camp Dakota was funny, but there was more sweet moments than, you know, laugh out loud funny moments. And this, you just got to throw in joke, 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 joke. And it really shows. It's a laugh out loud movie. Thank you. Yeah, I was, I watched this movie at my desk at work, and I'm just sitting there with my headphones on cackling. And Yay. it wasn't a great office situation, but it was an enjoyable movie. Um, awesome. I want to know, um, oh, so in the movie, Kate is very fixated on this letter that she gets in the mail. Yeah. This is not a spoiler. This is the plot. Um, <laughs> I promise. Um, and it's all about, like, this is who I'm going to be when I turn 30. What did you guys think you were going to be when you grew up when you were kids? Oh, we began this question a lot, and it's always so interesting to kind of try and reflect on the, the person you were when you were, like, 16, let's say. Um, for me, I genuinely thought when I was 16, I had, like, such small aspirations. I was like, I'm going to have, like, a husband, and... What? <laughs> what? I was like, Spoiler. I'm going to have a, a husband, Hannah. Yeah, that's <laughs> the ticket. Um, <laughs> Were you Mr. Burns when you were 16? Uh, yeah, I was like, the house. just put it there. Um, and kids. And I was like, and maybe I'll be a teacher. You know, I was like, I just wanted to like have a family and make sure I was happy and just really as, as simple as possible. So I fucked that one up. Um, <laughs> no, but uh, yeah. And so I think that like, you know, really, but th th those were my dreams at that moment. 
you know, in time, uh, regardless of whether or not they were rooted in like a deeply seated homophobia. Um, so, but my it dream- just got rural. <laughs> yeah. um, but no, so now I'm actually I never expected to be this person sitting here today, and I'm so happy to be this person that it's just such a pleasant surprise. We're happy you're this person too. Yeah, oh, thanks, we're man. very pleasant. Yeah, oh, thanks, we're really oh, happy. Oh, <laughs> if you had a husband and kids, I don't think we'd hang. No. <laughs> It'd be weird. Uh, for me, I always wanted to do the performing, so I'm getting to do what I always dreamed about doing, but I'm getting to do it in a cooler way because we're kind of in charge of our own destiny and the way we've built up YouTube. YouTube's opened the doors that would be a lot harder to open if I was just auditioning. And so I feel like I'm getting to live my dream, but I'm lucid dreaming. And so I'm actually oh. getting to control my dreams. Wow. That's the first time I've said that, and that was really good. I think it was. I'm going to have to process that later. Wow. Um, At 16, I didn't have real, like, tangible, concrete life goals. I mean, I knew that I wanted to move away from home at some point and not live in my parents' house. Uh, I love my parents very much, and their house is fine. Um, (laughs) But uh, I wanted to move away, and I wanted to be creative. I didn't know exactly what. I, I didn't necessarily think I wanted to be a performer I just knew I wanted to be creative and and then I just sort of like tackled life a couple months at a time like I've never had a long-term plan which has been really helpful because I think one of the hardest things and it's a huge theme in Dirty 30 is managing your own expectations for yourself so when you it's great to set goals but it's also great to realize that if you don't achieve those goals everything can still be okay or that the goals change I mean we've talked about this before um, in the last week when we've been discussing the movie and that we all have gotten this incredible boost and this incredible um, career lift from the internet and when I was 16 the internet was AOL dial up and like if someone called you got bumped off I'm old y'all yeah she said in an interview earlier today that she didn't think that she'd be working on the net and she said it (laughs) unironically The um, net. Yeah, no sarcasm, just <laughs> authentically what she felt. So that's what I'm saying. It's like we couldn't even have guessed this would be our career because it didn't exist. It's true. And like as uh, as about, uh, as my friends and people in my age group turn 30, it's interesting to see those who are still pining after their teenage dreams and are actually unhappy in their present current life because those that life doesn't reflect what they thought it would be. And I always just think, like, what a waste. Instead of, like, yearning for something that you don't have, why don't you appreciate and try and focus on what you do have and be like, okay, I have this, this, and this, but maybe I want a more creative outlet. So with my resources, what can I do to have a more creative outlet? Instead of thinking, like, well, if I'm not literally Brad Pitt, then I am unhappy. Like, but so many people think that way. You would be a great career counselor, I feel like. (laughs) Yeah. I want you to just, like, be my HR manager. (laughs) Good advice. Um, now that I have you all here, I do want to roll a clip. Ooh. Oh, yeah. That's good old clip. <laughs> I feel like that clip kind of gave a great intro to the characters. I want to talk about the characters really quickly. Um, is there a bit of Hannah and Grace within their characters? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Okay, tell us more, and, James yeah. Lipton. Which, which Sorry, I saw his names like that, and I was like, oh, here we are so actor, fancy. Actor. <laughs> actor. Um, absolutely. I mean, Hannah no, Hannah's talked about it before. Tell them how you discovered how like your character you are. Uh, when I first read the script, I um, was very surprised because my character Charlie, uh, the main like plot line that they follow is that they challenge uh, you know a much larger person to a series of competitions uh, throughout the night, and you know I was really surprised by that because I was like, oh, someone who's like really competitive, like that's that's not like me. Um, thanks so much, Mamrie, for giving me a role that's really going to stretch me as an actor, and she was like. What are you talking about? Uh, Because I guess that when I get drunk, I get a little competitive. But also when you're sober. We literally were just doing an interview an hour ago, and we were playing Two Truths and a Lie, and you were winning, and the girl didn't acknowledge that, and you said, no, but I'm a point ahead. It's not about competition. It's about accuracy. If Mamrie was a point ahead, I would say Mamrie is the one who is a point of head. Like, you know what I mean? It's accuracy. I just happen to often be winning. All right. Uh, and Grace, uh, Grace's character, Evie, I feel like is a combination of her and me a little bit. 
Uh, because she just gets so excited to throw this party, and she is just the number one cheerleader in fun times. Yeah, uh, she's way more, I think, uh, extroverted than I am as a human being, so that's more like Mamrie, but I, I get excited about excitement and people having a good time and making sure people are having a good time, and so I think that's where Evie and I sort of get along. And also, like, Evie doesn't know how to pace herself at all, so that's also something, you know, I'm working on actively. <laughs> We're all changing. Um, speaking of those like nice lower thirds, how do you guys feel about having actor under your name? I mean, I think it's super cool. For me, it's like, uh, you know, I really have a huge, huge, huge respect for actors and the, that art form and that craft because it's something that takes so much time, but then also so much vulnerability. I feel like people that are really truly good at acting truly know themselves and how to tap into aspects of themselves that um, a lot of people don't even acknowledge exist. Yeah, I feel like my title should say actor in progress. Like I'm not fully there. Uh, I, I've, I've done some acting and I, I'm, I get excited to get better every time we have a new project. And I think that was really, I felt really proud of myself and everyone in this performance because I think from Camp Dakota, the movie that we made a couple years ago, it's a huge evolution for all of us and a huge like graduation of, of growth in that world. I agree. I mean, I think the more you do it, the better you get at it which is why, I mean, like, you guys, I saw from Electro Woman Diner Girl, it was like you had this whole project in between, and it was like another growth step in acting. And then when we got to set at Dirty 30, it was just like, I'm always, I'm blown away by their choices. There's some subtlety in what Hannah does on certain oh. lines. Like, when she's just like, oh, I get it, we're lying. Like, all these little, like, moments in the movie where she's just like, hmm, hmm, just Great. that she adds that I think are so wonderful. <laughs> That's so nice. <laughs> she get, she gave your Oscar speech right there. Yeah, exactly. That's so sweet. <laughs> um, uh, so, were there any other characters in the film that were kind of just taken from your real life? From real life, not so much. I mean. <sighs> I think there's probably, there's no one specifically in any of our real lives. There's it's definitely archetypes. Like yeah. we said, we wanted this to be modeled off a traditional like high school party movie yeah. set in adulthood. So there's definitely the bitch played right. by Anna Akana, who oh, is she does such just a good such job. a non-bitch off camera. Just oh, she's such so a great, great human. You know, you have your jock. You have your nerd that gets the gets revenge. You have all those different archetypes that you'd have in any John Hughes Breakfast Club type of film, but what they would be doing in in uh, you know, in adulthood. Yeah, cuz I think it's really easy to kind of, you know, classify cliques in high school and then you think that those lines dissolve when you're an adult and not not completely. There's still a lot of that that's really present in adulthood. But I will say that what I really love is that in those um, in those John Hughes movies, you know, it's like the jock is still the jock. He's top of his game. But then in Dirty 30, you have what happens to that person, you know, 12 years later after high school, which is something that the glory of Facebook shows us all. Like people that peak in high school, yikes, peak in high school. There's a lot of life after high school. Too much, almost. Um, <laughs> Wow, that was dark. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, so uh, behind the scenes, um, you guys are all executive producers on this film, just like Camp Dakota. Um, is that something that you guys are interested in doing more outside of Holy Trinity projects or, yeah? Absolutely. I think we all want to develop things. Uh, none of us have vanity about our ideas. So I know every time we're going into a different project, be it writing it or um, just pr from a producing aspect, we always go in with a matter of, we don't have to be in this. We just want to make sure it's the best it can be. Yeah. Um, so we definitely want to develop more um, because being in charge of every aspect and on screen, writing, producing, you're going to churn out less things. And I've personally, I think I speak for all of us, is uh, I have too many ideas to execute every job. Yeah. yeah. I, I think personally, like my... my agenda motivated by self-interest is that I just want to make more LGBT content and I want to make stuff that um, where LGBT relationships or characters the focus isn't their coming out story or isn't them realizing their sexuality or any of that stuff it's just stories that are good stories oh and this character happens to also be a gay person like you know what I mean yeah it's a real human being yeah just a person yeah. you know which I think we accomplish in Dirty 30 Dirty 30 does a great Absolutely. job but no spoilers <laughs> Um, uh, you guys are always putting out weekly content on YouTube. This movie, 
Most, this week has been a people. rough week for me, to be totally honest. <laughs> but you know, Snapchat, Instagram stories, right. every yeah. whatever's yes. next. Yeah. Um, what was like, you know, just focusing on one project and characters for you know however long we filmed for. There's no such thing as focusing on one project. Okay. Uh, yeah, the the other things don't quit. So it's when. You know, at any point in time, which when people are like, oh, you're being slack on YouTube or whatnot. Like, when we were doing Hey USA, yeah. the first season, and we're traveling and we're getting off a day where we white water rafted for eight hours and rock climbed and went, did, you know, was on camera for 12 hours. I was getting calls that we needed this tomorrow, the script. And, and then also the first manuscript of my book was due in seven days. So, like, at any point, it's, you're spinning multiple, multiple plates. They just... Are released at different times and it's also just managing your own focus being able yeah. to focus on one project for a certain period of time where your like full attention is required and then being able to shift your focus to the other projects that you have that are still all on burners it's like a uh, cooking you know yeah which I'm not good at but <laughs> <laughs> just so you know grace actually is pretty good at cooking like you uh, I'm great at like really repressing stress <laughs> <laughs> but like I always really one of the things I admire most about grace is that you are you know you do so much you do just as much as we do and you have so much stuff going on and yet you are the most consistent with your uploads mm. like and I just respect that so much because it's not that any of us are ever taking a break none of us are ever being lazy like I wish there was this like lackadaisical idea of myself that like oh I'm not feel like posting a video. No, it's just that we're so busy and then somehow you do it. Yeah, I think um, I am fueled by fear of letting people down. <laughs> just I that. love guilt. <laughs> <laughs> like, can I hate myself about this all day long? Sounds yeah. good. Those sound like ingredients to success, I feel like. Guilt and letting people not yeah. letting people down. Yeah, yeah. Um, I want you guys to talk about the best parties you've ever been to or ever thrown. Because this is pretty freaking good. good. It's, it's a, a good great party. party. Yeah. Mamrie's kind of master of party throwing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm good at a theme. I've thrown very good theme parties throughout my life, but also just I, the key to throwing a good party is having is being the guest that has the most fun. Yeah. So like. If you're the host, you should also be having the most fun. And I, too many people, they get so wrapped up in, is it going to be perfect? Is everyone going to show up? Are we going to have a good time? Is everyone okay? That they themselves don't have a great time. Yeah. And it's all based, it's a trickle-down effect. If the host is having fun, everyone else is having fun. Speaking of great parties, <laughs> we had a premiere party two nights ago. Woo. Dude. It crushed. <laughs> It was it crushed, amazing. It crushed so I, hard that Mamrie missed her flight to New York City the next morning. <laughs> <laughs> and then I got on the next flight in full makeup from the night before. She did. Uh, I like to send bitmojis, and Mamrie likes to send exactly her face. She calls them shitmojis. <laughs> yeah. She refuses to download bitmojis, so it's just her face doing something crazy. Yeah. It's just like a Miranda sings. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, but it was incredible. We had like, I mean, it was it was wonderful. Lionsgate threw an incredible premiere party, and I just hope that everybody had so much fun because we had so many of um, other digital creators and like our friends come out and support the movie, yeah. which was something that was so wonderful because we know how busy they are. Yeah, and they're also in the movie, which and is even cool. ones yeah. who weren't like Colleen. Yeah, and, like, oh totally. Yeah. But but that's another thing is we have so many great talented other content creators who are in the movie, and they're so good. Yeah, at their they're parts. so good. Speaking of Lion Gate, um, what was it like having just that iconic opening at the beginning of your film? I feel like that's pretty freaking exciting. Yeah, it's super exciting. It's super I, exciting to see like a big logo that you're so familiar with. You know, it's like dun, 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 or whatever their song is. Um, yeah, you know, I and you're just like, like ah. it's like when you walk into a party with like the most attractive person on earth, and you're like, this is who I'm with. Everyone, back up. I'm so glad I get to make you yeah, feel that way. Thank you, Mamrie, for being that for me. <laughs> Uh, yeah, no, it was just cold chills on cold chills. Like, one of those moments on Tuesday, we had the premiere, and then when we walked into the party before everyone got there, and seeing that that all the things you're thinking of, they come into fruition, and they're executed, I started crying. Oh, but Mamrie, there was a man covered in uh, Tostino's pizza rolls <laughs> in the front, and Mamrie had to pause next to him to cry to about weeping. how beautiful it was at the party. It was a great moment. Everything you ever wanted. It sounds like a dream. Yeah. Um, I want to take us to the next clip, which gives us a little bit more insight into the characters' personalities. Great. Cool. Oh, oh, what okay. happens next? I know. Every time we watch anything from the movie, I'm like, oh, I want to watch the movie. The whole movie, please. Yeah. Well, luckily, it is released tomorrow on iTunes. It's released tonight, tonight at midnight. At midnight. Well, tonight at midnight. Yeah. So if you guys go home and you 
pre-order it and start downloading it now, it'll play directly at midnight. You don't have to wait. Yeah, it's so good. Yeah. That sounded like our goth girl group. Tonight at midnight. <laughs> I love good coven, so. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, we're going to take it to you. Oh, I just threw some water. Um, we're going to take it to you guys with some fan questions. Um, hi, I'm nervous. Hi. hi nervous. That's a beautiful hi, yeah. name. <laughs> Is that a family name? God, we're nerds. Yeah. No, um, my name's Tatiana. Um, first of all, happy birthday. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. happy birthday, uh, baby. <laughs> Um, second off, um, I wanted to know, um, first, uh, second of all, congratulations to all of you and all your projects that you've ever done. Um, you all do very amazing. I've followed you for a few years. Um, it's been a great ride so far. Um, I wanted to know, what would you or what do you say to people who tell you that um, you're wasting your time doing YouTube when you have all these other things going on and you're expanding your horizons and stuff like that? Like, what would you or what do you say to people who say, oh, you know, you still do that YouTube thing? Like, or to people who say, oh, it's not a real job and, and things like that. Like, what do you say? Now show me the receipts. No, just <laughs> Um, I, 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 to people that think YouTube isn't a real job or wonder why we spend our time doing it, I feel just kind of embarrassed for them having that point of view because to myself and I'm, for you guys, I, I believe it's really a special thing that we've stumbled into. It was truly a hobby, something that we, we all just authentically enjoyed that happened to become a job, which is, you know, the best thing you could ever ask for with a job to be yeah. something you actually enjoy doing. That doesn't happen for everyone. So it's... Hannah has this amazing quote that she said years and years ago uh, on this panel that we were at that, uh, you know, dance with the one that brought you. And if YouTube's the one that brought you to the dance, you'd be a real jerk to just start dancing with, like, ABC. Yeah, and it's like, you just, you dance with other people, but you always dance with the give one that brought you. Give them a spin. Yeah, give yeah. them a spin around the block. But honestly, um, the thing is, is that it's still fun. It's yeah. still a hobby. It's fun to make videos. I love it every time. And I think that thinking of it, like, as my job, like, like when I really get in my head about obligation, like, oh my God, I have to post two videos a week. Uh, and I get all like in my head about it. I'm like, wait, you like to make videos, Hannah, you know? Right. Um, so that's when people are saying like, why do you still do that? I'd be like, because I like it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hi, my name is Matt. Hi, Matt. Great sneakers. Why, thanks. Mm -hmm. Um, and I've been a huge fan of you guys for so many years, Grace, even since the Grace and Michelle days. Whoa, vintage. Right? Wow. Oh. <laughs> just kidding. A little bit. <laughs> um, I just wanted to know if you guys had a favorite food or snack from craft services on the movie? Oh, yeah, baby. Oh, at 11 a.m. every day was dip time. <laughs> and he would create a new dip. Sometimes there were some different flavored hummuses. Yep. Sometimes there was this Mahamar, which we, is... We really fell pretty. in love with this craft service guy. So at much. Camp Dakota. Mm -hmm. And then when we found out that he would also be on the set for Dirty 30, it was like, oh, thank God. Yeah, and because then like a week into shooting, he got a whiteboard, so he would write what the dips of the day were going to be on the whiteboard so we had something to look forward to because there were two dips, one in the morning, one in the afternoon. It Sorry, It doesn't we're take passionate. a lot for... We love dips. <laughs> we love dips. So <laughs> excited. <laughs> oh, so excited. Oh, it was so good. Thank you, guys. Thank you. You got it, thanks. <laughs> What's the most memorable thing that's happened to you in New York? Like, what's your best New York City story? Whoa. Wow. Well, we both lived here, I lived here eight years. Yeah. Yeah. I was here five. I don't know if I have a best story because there's so many memes that you make and there's so many different versions of your life in going from 22 to 30. Mm -hmm. But I think I'm just really proud. I moved here with a deflated air mattress and $400. Wow. And so I think that, I, I think the thing I'm just... The biggest memory is like how insane I felt in an empty apartment with like three sweet potatoes to eat for the week. Yeah. And um and just like the pride of living here is difficult. Like you got it's a part-time job in and of itself. So yeah. you should be very proud that you've lasted 33 days. Yeah. Um and just to keep going because there's all you're going to meet amazing people around you and no one's going to let you fall. It's the most magical city because so many things can happen here. As, as difficult as it, as it is, it has such rewards, too, so it's its balance. One of my favorite stories that Mamrie, um, Mamrie actually threw me a birthday party in New York, in Brooklyn, <laughs> one year because I hate throwing parties for myself. I get very anxious about it. And so she's like, I got you, like last minute. And so she threw it at this bar, but we were meeting at another bar first and then walking over and she came and she's like, I have my, uh, she texted me like, I have your birthday gift with me. And she brought me, 
she had like uh, it was a one of the green screens that folds up into that circle, oh. and she had wrapped it up, and then she wrote diaphragm no. on dental dam. Oh, dental dam. <laughs> <laughs> this is how deeply I've repressed it. And she gave it to me at the first bar, so I had to carry it through Brooklyn Giant to my birthday dam. party, and then set it in the back where everything. Was. Like I full on made a packaging. Yeah. It was a dental dam this big. <laughs> Yeah, it was really great. So, like, memories like that can happen here. Oh, I'm excited yeah. for New York City then. Yeah, yeah, yeah concrete jungle. Yeah. <laughs> Hi. Um, I was just wondering, um, as a creator, how much, how many ideas do you have that just don't even make it to telling your friends about? Like, what's the ratio of things that don't even get started or created because... Like, I want to create things, but sometimes I'm too intimidated to even begin. Oh, my God, like nine to one? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Well, Which yeah. Way? Which way? Well, you think about things all the time. You're like, oh, that's a good idea. Oh, that'd be cool. I don't make that. Maybe everything that seems time-consuming, I don't do. <laughs> it's true. I'm, uh, yeah, it's true. I, I get really intimidated about failing. And so it's like I can only do something as quickly as I can get it done. As qu like, I'm like, can I get this done right now? Okay, so then I'm not scared and I don't stop. Um, which is why I think I stumbled onto YouTube. Um, Says so the girl who's written two books. Well, you I, I was gonna say, except for writing, but then I studied writing like my whole life. Right. You know what I mean? Like that's like the way you feel about acting is the way I feel about writing. It's like the oh, same. yeah, yeah. yeah. Totally. But it, it's also good to surround yourself with the people that can execute. Because we Camp Dakota wouldn't have happened had we not met Michael Goldfein, who is one of the executive producers on it and also on Dirty Thirty. Hannah had just met him in a general meeting, and then I met him in a general meeting, and Mamrie met him in a general meeting. And once she told him about a script for a camp movie that she had been working on, he immediately was like, okay, when are we doing it? Yeah, block off two months this summer. Yeah. But the script was not written. I had 20 pages of a script that had nothing to do with three friends. It was just about one woman. So it's, I mean, I think there's a level of worrying it's going to take too long, but it's just starting it. It's yeah. just putting it down. And I think it's really important to surround yourself with people that you have zero embarrassment bouncing an idea off them yeah. and also people who will hold you accountable and be like great bitch I want to see the treatment in two weeks totally like, show yeah. me show it to me and if you have a lot of ideas but you have trouble picking like which one you're like oh man like I have these five things they all seem equally cool then don't make the challenge uh, you know being like which of these is the best idea make the challenge which of these can I think about for a week yeah, I was going to say, some ideas seem great in the moment, and then three days later, you completely forget about them. But there's always an idea that lingers, that you're like, hmm, but that'd be really cool. And usually it lingers because you should do it in yeah. some way. Yeah, just start it. It's like when you have, it's like when you have so much laundry, <laughs> dirty laundry, and you're just like, I got to do laundry for like a week. And it's yeah. like, just do your laundry. It's going to take 20 minutes. Yeah. You know, so just start. Just get that first sentence down. And then it's no longer a thing that just exists in the ether. It's a project you're working on. Yep. Hi. Hi. I'm Juliana. Hi, Hi Juliana. Um, and um, so first of all, happy birthday, Mamrie. Thank you very yeah. much. Um, I love you all so much. You're so inspiring. And um, I just wanted to ask, um, from filming the movie, um, what have you learned about yourselves as actors and each other as sort of just people? Um, and what sort of like what has changed between what you've learned about yourselves from actors from Camp Dakota and from and then up until Dirty Thirty? Great question. Wow. Um, I would say the thing that I learned about myself as an actor is that I'm just so scared all the time. Like I'm so insecure. Like so like because it's like something I'm not confident about, and so it's like. I don't want to try different things. I don't want to like step, like trying to get comfortable with experimenting and like, cause that's what good acting is, right? It's like bringing things to the role, but like I'm so terrified of fucking up that I'm just like, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> no. So Camp Dakota, I literally was like, these are my lines. <laughs> no, you crushed it. That's how I felt. Well, no, yeah, no, that's how you feel. I'm not discounting your feelings whatsoever, but you hide it well. You yeah. act like you're confident. Yeah. So that's uh, your greatest great role. God, it's, it's a lie. It's a lie. I've learned that I, the choices in my, I, I want to be more cognizant and like watch playback more, which I'd never do. Because even in my YouTube videos, like I'll edit the video and just upload immediately. I don't like watching it back. It uh, for some reason makes me like embarrassed. And that's when like mistakes happen. Like 20 minutes of black space just happens at the end of a video. Constant.
constantly. And uh, now it's charming, maybe. I don't know. Um, but in, I, I don't watch playback a lot when I do stuff in the longer form content. And so the choices in my head that I think that I'm making that are big, when I watch the final product, I'm like, oh, that wasn't as bold as I thought in that moment I was making uh, for that choice. And so I think it's really good to like force yourself to look at yourself figure out what you want to change and do it again and don't be afraid to make those changes. Yeah, you have to analyze even if you feel like it's going to make you cringe. Yeah. You know, it's athletes have to watch playback to see what they need to do differently. Right. And I think it's the same with acting. Yeah, it's like it's like reading a second draft yeah. or you know or getting notes. Yeah. It's just like okay, here you go and you're like look at the first ones, you're like okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's so scary. I wanted to ask, was there anything that you took away from doing Camp Dakota that you felt was like a learning experience? I don't want to use the word failure, but anything that was like, wow, we should never, ever do that again. <laughs> hmm. oh, never. never, ever do that again. You know, I will say one thing that I wanted to do. Uh, Camp Dakota was magical, and I'm so excited that our first movie was so um, insular and the three of us. But I knew from that that we had so much fun when anyone visited set yeah. or was in for like a day player role. So I just feel like our energy, like we're so in sync with each other that we need people who are very different from us to bounce off of, which is why in Dirty 30 it was like we need all different types of characters and all different. YouTube, but also just traditional sketch comedy or yeah. audition for the role. We need variety around us, and I think it really brings out, you raise your bar when there's yeah. other other dynamics around. Yeah, I also think Camp Dakota is a very sweet film with a lot of heart, and because it's sweeter, the pacing's a little slower, so it's kind of like, that film's like classical music, and this film's more like jock jams, which the pacing is, you know, much quicker, and it's funnier, and it's, uh, you know, in your face, and it's joke, 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 and character, character, character. There's moments where it slows down, like jock jams always have that build up, and then the beat drops, uh, you know. So you gotta those, catch your breath. Right? There's those sweet moments, so I was really excited once, you know, we did Camp Dakota to try to do the thing that we love, which is comedy, just like pure comedy. Yeah. I also learned to get the same crafty for dip day. Yeah, <laughs> dips, dem dips dough. Oh my God, hi guys. Hi. hi. I love you guys way too much, but anyway, <laughs> happy birthday memory. Um, really random question about the movie. Did you guys take advantage of the set and throw a party without the cameras rolling and without soy milk and because why not? I wish, like a, a person lives there. Yeah. Like that was a house that we rented, yeah. and the owner from time to time would just wander around set with his dog off leash, to the point that I had to ask them if they saw the man because I thought it was a ghost just wandering around the pool with a dog. And I was like, no one else is stopping this man, and he's somehow here with a dog just wandering around. That sounds like a ghost to me. Well, then they're like, no, that's the owner, and he wasn't. Who died forty years no! ago? No! No! <laughs> Um, unfortunately, we weren't allowed to take advantage of this awesome, huge place. I think the closest it came was when we wrapped out. We shot there for two weeks, and then we went dark a week for Thanksgiving, um, and then shot all the scenes that aren't at the party, all the lead up and the like, uh, scenes subsequent towards the end, which was very fun to go dark over Thanksgiving when you need to not look bigger a week later. <laughs> oh, she's got a crop, crop top. And a crop top. And I was like, wait, we're coming back after Thanksgiving and continuing to shoot in the crop top? What? <laughs> no. I think the closest we came was uh, the last night at the house when we knew we were getting a break. Just the camera crew just rolled in with like two coolers of beers. Yeah. Yeah. That's about it. But we had to sit on the steps though. We couldn't even go in the house. But that's you know, why there's a difference between work and play. Work hard, yeah. play hard. You know, it's like when you're working, you're working. But that's you know? why our premiere party was that much more fun because we oh, finally yeah. got the house party that we had wanted the whole time that we were shooting. That premiere party. Yeah, we did. Awesome. Yeah, we did. Yeah, we did. <laughs> I think I still feel hungover from that premiere party. Like I remember, I saw Grace uh, and Diane at the airport, and I, and Grace was like, "Mamrie," and I was like, "I don't know. I've been calling her because we're trying to get on the plane." And I was just like, "I feel crazy. Like I don't know where I am right now." Yeah. It was awesome. I went to a Q&A. We crashed the screening last night in New York. And when I got there, I had sleep lines from my jacket, like a Mike Tyson tattoo still on my face from the plane. Yep. So, yeah. All right. Um, I want to thank you all for joining us. And I want one last round of applause for these lovely ladies.